Okay, folks, welcome to Best Stock Charts for the coming week. This is Bob Desmond, and it is the 20th, Sunday the 20th. Uh, the trades that we're looking at as we move into the new trading week are UPS as a long, Redfin as a short, Joe as a short, and Cure, C-U-R-E, Leverage DTF, putting you long of healthcare. We're going to go over those charts in a moment. And this evening, we're going to talk a bit about the stimulus package that was passed over the weekend when we go live tonight at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for Sunday Night Futures Live. So please join us there. Use the link below to get alerted 15 minutes prior to us going live or just simply click the subscribe button, click the bell button, and YouTube will send you out a notification when we do go live. So before we begin, let's pay the bills and let's talk a bit about our sponsor, which is TrendSpider. I use it, I believe in it so much that I offer it as part of our silver and gold level memberships free of charge because I believe that in this day and age where time is so precious, you need to automate your grunt work by speeding up your analysis of identifying opportunities. And by leveraging that beautiful trade alert system, what it allows you to do in advance of the new trading day, it allows you to set up parameters of basically a rules-based approach. If we get a pullback or we test support, an alert fires off. If we break out above resistance, another alert fires off. Until those alerts get fired off, you don't want to look at the chart because it reduces your risk of impulse trading. You don't want that. So please take advantage of their seven-day free trial offer. I offer a 14-day free trial offer to the contrarian trader. And if you simply want TrendSpider, go for it. There's a link down below, 35% off. Take advantage of it. Use the link below in the description area. Or you could simply sign up for the Contrarian Trader, get it for free. Okay, let's get to the charts. Now, we're going to begin with a monthly chart to identify where UPS has been to determine where it might be going. And you could see here clearly we have a beautiful breakout on the month out of this triangle formation. So our monthly time frame is telling us the path of least resistance is to the upside. You don't want to fight it. We may be contrarians, but we do not fight the trend unless, of course, it's become overdone, meaning the stock has become overbought, extreme overbought. Now, you can see here on a weekly time frame, we broke out the week prior to last. Last week, we retested the breakout point, and then we had a continuation breakout. This is a beautiful setup here. Let's overlay the weekly trend lines, and you can see that the automated trend lines, simply by a click of a button, is validating our thesis that in all probability, UPS is going to head up higher. RSI, validating the move up higher by putting in higher lows and breaking out. So, very pretty daily chart. Daily chart is telling us that in all probability, we are going to continue to break out here. Now, the question that we have is this. Where might there be resistance above? Again, we're going to pull out our automated trend lines, click of a button, and they're telling us that we have resistance up at around 179, 180 per share. We closed out the week last week at 175.18. So something to be aware of, perhaps not getting overly aggressive right now, put on that small opening position to test the market, then look for a continuation move higher. And if we break out above these upper bands of resistance, we want to add more. The next chart up, Redfin, monthly time frame. You can see that we're very extended here relative to the third standard deviation bond your band. Now, this is an overbought trade. I'm going to go do a deeper dive into the daily chart to illustrate the whys behind we would want to short this name. So bear with me for a moment. Uh, we still do have a respectable, healthy breakout here. Weekly time frame, clean breakout last week, but we closed out the week above the third standard deviation Bollinger Band daily chart. Here's where things get a little bit wonky. We closed out the week with RSI near 90. It looks as though we'll probably move up higher here. 
I would not go shorting this on Monday morning. I do think they'll probably spike it up higher. Then we'll be looking to lean into the short side on Redfin. The reason why this is more of a risky trade than normal is that we're at all-time highs, right? So we don't have any overhead supply, meaning uh, areas of resistance above where we might have short sellers of like mind willing to fight a breakthrough of resistance. So we'll have to be very deliberate here, wait for signs of weakness, wait for light volume up days, and then we could pounce. Not right now. It's not ready yet. So I would advise, show patience. All the indicators are implying you should short, not yet. Now, oftentimes I'm asked about these extreme overbought stocks and what our strategy is. Is it a bet that it's a bad business model, the stock is going to collapse? No, rarely is it that. The market is telling us that this is a strong stock. It's to be respected. So what are we expecting to get out of this trade? Simply a scalping of the froth. That is it. Now, you may be asking, you know, how do you identify where do you take profits if, in fact, you're accurate in your uh, trade thesis that the shares are overbought and due for pullback? I would just point you over to the trend lines, right? We'll take them off. And what I would do here is simply do this. Here's my logical support level at 64.14. So we broke out above that mark, retested it, held. It makes sense that that would be a point at which where we would look to book profits and then exit the trade because there's no stretch of the imagination do I believe that the shares are simply going to collapse. So that's the trade thesis. It'll be the same for St. Joe as well. So let's go to St. Joe. This is a real estate company. They own land down in Florida, perhaps other areas. We'll start with the daily chart and we'll, we'll work our way back because there is overhead supply here, meaning we do have resistance above. So we'll work back. Why do we like it? We like it because we have RSI, which closed out the day at 87 plus. Uh, we are shy of the third standard deviation Bollinger Band. Doesn't mean we can't move up higher. We most certainly can. We could easily see a 90 handle here on RSI. We broke out of a beautiful consolidation. So clearly, we have a lot of momentum. Weekly chart, this is not providing us with historical resistance. For, to do that, we need to go to a monthly chart. Now, to identify where there is historical resistance on St. Joe, we have to go all the way back using a quarterly chart back to 2008. And we like the 4671 mark on St. Joe. Perhaps we'll hit a little bit of resistance prior to that mark. But ideally, uh, we see an overshoot of that resistance level and then a sell off to close down below that mark. And that'll tell us in all probability on a daily time frame, we're beginning to lose a bit of momentum. But I would not short this stock right now. It may look extremely over overbought, and it is. It's extremely overbought. The however is, is that we are not at a level where we have short sellers of like mind who are able to help fight off all the longs that are bidding up these shares. So show patience, and we will send out trade alerts to members when we enter, add, and sell. And with that, folks, please hit that like button, subscribe button, and the bell button. Leave a comment below and join us tonight at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for Sunday Night Futures Live. Chat with you then. Be well.